you will notice that uh, in our prayers we are um, listing the family and friends of Melanie Johnson, um, who tragically passed away this week as well. So uh, we keep that family in our prayers. With that said, we will have a brief moment of prayer followed by our prelude. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for all of your blessings. We give you thanks, Lord, for the gift of unity, for the gift of oneness. Lord, help us to recognize our unity in you and to love one another as you first have loved us. Bless this time of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, and by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting spring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In the baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's needs through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. 
where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the, and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Our hymn is Rise, O Son of Righteousness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the readings. first reading is from Acts, the first chapter. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, 
It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Psalm 68, selected verses. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in the desert places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a beautiful rain, O oh God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel. Give strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. The second reading is 1 Peter chapter 4 and 5. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has taken place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. 
after Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything that you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world or on behalf of those whom, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. But now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. may be seated and I'd like to invite the children to come forward. Colony kids, it's time for colony kids. It's time for, time for, time for colony kids. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and good morning. Are you excited? What are you excited about? The picnic, I am too. But before we go th get to the picnic, we have to, we have to talk about Jesus a little bit, right? So, you ever play hide and seek? Yeah? You like hide and seek? Yeah. You think Jesus ever plays hide and seek? Yeah. In fact, after Easter, Jesus appears to the disciples and then he disappears. And then he shows up again, and then he disappears. And they never know where they're going to find him. It's more like peekaboo. He just kind of keeps appearing. And they never know where he's going to show up. One day they're out fishing, and somebody comes and says, Have you caught any fish? And they're like, No. And Jesus says, Throw the net on the other side. And Peter says, it's Jesus, and he dives in the water and, and comes out to meet Jesus, right? Another time, because some people are walking from one town to another, and Jesus starts talking to them, and then he has supper with them, and then poof, he disappears on them again. One time, when the room was locked, the doors were shut, Jesus appeared in the middle of the room, like that. And just like that... He disappeared again. Why do you think Jesus did that? Jesus wanted them to know that he was always around, even when they didn't see him, right? And he wanted them to know that Jesus could show up anywhere. He could show up when they were grocery shopping. He could show up when they were at the, at the movies. Well, they, wait, they didn't go to the movies. They didn't have movies. Okay, all right, all right, you got me there. Okay, he could show up anywhere, right? And then after Jesus had played peekaboo with the disciples for 40 days, the Bible likes the number 40. Can you remember other, any other 40s? How many, what? He didn't have any food or drink in the wilderness for 40 days. That's right. What about Noah's Ark? How many days did it rain? 
40 days. And how many years did the people of Israel wander around in the wilderness? 40. So after 40 days of Jesus kind of playing peekaboo, hide and go seek with the disciples, something really crazy happened. Jesus ascended into heaven. What does that word mean, ascend? He went back to heaven. How did he go back to heaven? No, how? How do you think he went back to heaven? Did he just kind of call a taxi, an Uber, and say, take me to heaven? I didn't have that back then. Okay, so how did Jesus get back to heaven? He went up there. But let's see, what does our lesson say today? It says... Right here. While Jesus was saying this, as they were, were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. So what did Jesus ride to heaven? A cloud. A cloud. And they're all looking like... And so ascension means to rise up. Okay? It means to go up. Right, like, the, yeah, so Jesus rose up above the people. He ascended into heaven, right? And well, he was there. All the disciples were like, and they're watching and they're watching. And two angels appear and they say, What are you looking at? What are you looking at? There's work to be done. Go do the work that Jesus sent you to do. He's like, Jesus will come back, but, but, but right now you need to go out and do the work. What is the work that we are supposed to be doing until Jesus comes back? Doing good works. What are good works? Okay. Well, that's a different kind of good work. The good works that Jesus wants us to do is being nice helping one another, being polite, right? Making somebody smile. You know what, Neil and I play a game sometimes when we go into the store. We try to see if we can get the cashier to crack up and smile. You know that? Sometimes, you know, being a cashier is hard work, and people are really mean to cashiers, aren't they? So sometimes Neil and I try to see if we can make them laugh. That's kind of a fun game to play, isn't it? Now, does doing good work save us? No. We are saved just because Jesus loves us, right? But we do good works because we're thankful to Jesus, right? Not because we need to do them, because Jesus doesn't need our good works. But all the other people around us, they need our good works. They need us to help them when they're hungry or thirsty, when they need clothes. That's what Jesus tells us in the Bible. He says, you know, if you... Gave somebody food, you did, it was just like you did that for me. If you gave somebody water, it's just like you did that for me. If you gave somebody who, clothing, who needed clothing, hey, it's just like you did that for me. That's what Jesus wants us to do. Not because we're saved by it. No, we're just saved because Jesus loves us, right? Right. But we do good works because we are thankful. Hmm? All right, so that is Ascension Day, when Jesus ascended into heaven after how many days? 40, 40 days, 40 days, and, and 40 days, Jesus went up into heaven, and you know what next Sunday is? Nope, Ascension Day was Thursday. We're going to wear red on Sunday, next Sunday. What does red mean? Was what? Okay. When we wear red, it means that it's time to party. Next Sunday is, we are officially done with Easter next Sunday. So, can you guys help me real quick? Mm -hmm. Since Easter ends next Sunday, maybe we should get rid of some butterflies. Can I have one? Well, you can have one, but I need to save them for next, for next Easter, okay? But can you guys go collect the butterflies for me? Thank you. <laughs> oh, that
that's a tough one to get, yes. <laughs> Colin, there's a couple up on the altar. You can just set them up on the pew right up there for me. All right. Yeah, some of them are really looped around. Why don't you not worry about the ones that are looped around and just pick up the ones that are kind of laying <laughs> in the pews? <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for all of your help. It takes a long time to put all those butterflies up. You can go back to your seats now. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Why don't you lay them right there on the, on the, on the seat? You can have one. Yes, you can each take home one. All right. <laughs> All right, Miss Adley, you can just lay them up on the front, and after church, if you see more, you can get them, okay? <laughs> All right, Miss Adley. <laughs> Thank you for your thoroughness. All right. Now the butterflies are playing hide-and-go-seek. All right, go set them on the front pew for me. All right, thank you. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son. Amen. Right on the front sit chair. Okay, that's fine too. <laughs> Speaking of butterflies, I hope you've checked out our butterfly garden. It's just looking very nice out there. You'll have a chance to see it this afternoon. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son. Amen. Have you ever stopped to ask yourself, what does God want for me? Or even collectively, what does God want from us? I know there are some people who proclaim that God wants material blessings for us. In the year 2000, I remember people talking about praying a certain prayer that would result in God's blessings, as if that prayer would force God's hand to bless people with money and things. But honestly, I believe that our material Wealth is immaterial to God. God is far more interested in our relationships, our relationship with the divine and our relationship with one another. And this is made evident in our gospel reading this morning, in the prayer that Jesus offers on our behalf. Let me back up a little bit. Let's talk about what's happening when we get to chapter 17. It is the night Jesus is to be arrested, the night before his crucifixion. Beginning in chapter 13 and going through chapter 16, Jesus has been with his disciples. He has washed their feet. He tells the disciples about what is to happen, about his arrest and crucifixion. He tells them that he's going away and that he will return. He commands them numerous times to love one another, to follow the commands that he has given them, to love one another. And then he tries to explain the coming of the Holy Spirit. And I say try to explain because I'm not sure we yet understand what Jesus is trying to say there about the Holy Spirit. And then in chapter 17, Jesus begins to pray for his disciples, for those who will follow 
in the footsteps of the disciples. That's actually in verse 20, which isn't included in a part of our reading this morning, but Jesus says, I ask not only on behalf of those of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. So this prayer in chapter 17 that Jesus is praying is for us. And what does Jesus pray for us? Jesus prays for our relationships, for our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Jesus prays for us to be one, for us to be one as he is one with God the Father. Let me read John 17, 17, 11 again. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. And Jesus expands on that petition in verses 20 to 23. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and loved them even as you have loved me. May they be one, as you are in me and I am in you, May they be in us. So not only are we to be united with our fellow believers, but we are united with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is praying for our relationships, for how we connect with one another. And what Jesus desires for us what Jesus prays for us is oneness, unity. Too often we mistake unity for uniformity. Sometimes we proclaim that one can only worship in a certain way, that it can only be authentic or effective if we believe the same things, or if we read the same translations of the Bible. But you see, our unity is not in what we do. Our unity is not in how we think. It is not based in what translations of the Bible we read or what hymns we sing. Our unity is not even in our doctrine or our creeds. Our unity comes through our relationship with God. We are made one in Christ. Isn't that what we say in baptism? In baptism, you are baptized into Christ, into the body of Christ. The many become the one. Our unity is based solely in our relationship with God the Father, with God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And just as God is three in one, we as followers of Jesus are one in God. I know that's hard for us to wrap our minds around. God is three in one and one in three, and somehow we who are multiple people and of multiple nations and languages and times are one in Christ. 
And that's okay if we don't understand it. We don't need to understand it for it to be true. And we know it is true because Jesus tells us so. Unfortunately, our world today is very focused, too focused, on our differences. Instead of seeing our commonalities, we only see how we differ from one another. We blame each other rather than helping one another. And this is not the way of Jesus. This is not what Jesus desires for us. And I think that's made clear in this call for unity. How can we love one another despite our differences in language, our differences in understanding, our differences in theology and politics? And maybe it's something we can't do on our own, but through Jesus we pray. Make us one as you are one, Lord. After the crucifixion, after the resurrection, the risen Jesus comes to his friends, still hiding in the upper room. And the first words he speaks to them, peace be with you. This is John chapter 20, 19 to 21. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. The peace which Jesus offers his disciples, the peace which Jesus offers us, is more than just a state of mind. It is forgiveness, wholeness, and joy. It is a sense of security in the face of evil, it is a restoration of relationship. Despite everything that happened at the cross, despite the disciples abandoning Jesus, denying Jesus, and betraying Jesus, there is forgiveness. There is no need to fear any longer. This is the same peace that is offered to us today and every day, the peace which passes all understanding, a peace that is rooted in our relationship with God. And it is in this peace where we find our unity as children of the one God, creator of all things, united as one people of God to proclaim the good news of Jesus, to all the world. Amen. Would you please stand and join in singing hymn number 579, Lord, you give the great commission.
United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O oh God. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet and grant wisdom to use it wisely. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O oh God. You care for all your children. Show us your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, 
refugees or prisoners, break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind, comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness, especially Gloria Biedenbaugh, Terry Cromer, Bernice Fort, Shelby Hartle, Joyce Jakeway, Eva Nice, Francis Long, Ladale Long, Robert Longshore, Harold Loveless, Alexis Morris and Kensley Onyx Hayes, Will Nobles, Jane L. Ringer, Bernice Sheely, Carolyn Sheely, Kevin Sousa, Tina Staub, Jean Whitlock, Don Wickland, Dean Wise, Pat and Steve Wise, the friends and family of Melanie Johnson and Warren Tucker, Steve Birdsmith, Tony Bachnight, Brian Cassidy, Linda Brake, and the family and friends of Lisa Leal. For those whom we lift to you both aloud and in our hearts, Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, guide us in your love to do ministry in the world, especially through our prayer partners this week, Lutheran Church of the Redeemer in Charleston, South Carolina, and their pastor, Reverend Ryan Lyles, Jamie Rising, and Deacon Katie Holland. We also pray for our presiding bishop, Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, and our synodical bi bishop, Reverend Ginny Abisher, and their respective staffs. We present with our companion synods of Columbia, Japan, and the Southwest Diocese of Tanzania. May they all know that you are present in their ministry to those in need. Hear us, O God. Gracious God, grant peace among nations. Especially we pray for an end to the war between Ukraine and Russia. Hear us, O God. Into your care, almighty God, Watch over Nick, Simon, and all of our service members. Be a tower of safety and strength to those deployed, a comfort and refuge in danger. Keep our service people safe from the enemy and accident. Defend them, waking and sleeping. Bless them during travel, and let your love be an anchor and a joy for them through the time they are away. Hear us, O God. Comfort those affected by recent natural disasters including tornadoes, floods, and earthquakes. Comfort those who mourn. Give hope in the face of loss. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. God, this congregation's leaders, as they seek your will, we pray for our staff and council. Hear us, O oh God. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And also with you. Let us take a moment to greet our neighbors.
So last Mother's Day, um, actually while we were here in church, I believe, uh, Alexis Morris gave birth to Kensley Onks Hayes. And she weighed six pounds, six ounces, and was 18 and a half inches long. And this has been corrected from what was in the Colony Connection. Uh, her grandparents are Todd and Lisa. Uh, her great-grandmother is Miss Peggy, and her uncle is Nick. So, well, Jeff, we, we, we put Jeff in the Colony Connection. That's technically right, but we meant to put Nick. So we offer congratulations. Today, we have our picnic after church. I hope you'll stay. The sun looks like it's trying to come out. We got a lot of fun things, especially for our younger folks, but also bingo for the older folks. So I hope you'll stay and enjoy some good food. Next Sunday is Pentecost, so wear red. If you happen to have some geraniums laying around that you wouldn't mind you know, bringing to church and putting in the windows, that would be great, but that's okay if you don't have them. But wear red as we, we have our, one of our two red days when we wear red in church. Pentecost, the birthday of the church, and Reformation, the birthday of the Lutheran Church. So I hope that you will join us. Uh, Vacation Bible School is June 18th to the 22nd. It's a month away. I'm scared by that. Okay, registration forms are in the back, uh, where, next to the place where you, you sign the letter to the pastors we prayed for. And we still need volunteers, so if you would like to participate, let me know. Next slide. Uh, beginning June 18th through Ju July 16th, there will be an adult Bible study after services. It's, it's Bible 101. We're going to talk about how the Bible came together and what resources we use when we study the Bible. So I hope you'll join, join me for that. Um, the Christ in Our Home devotional for July, August, and September is now in the back. There are still plenty of copies for this month. Um, please take them. And if you are using them, would you let the office know if there's something that you want to continue uh, if the church should continue to order to provide for you, we would like to know that. So if that's something that you've enjoyed in the past that you would like to continue to enjoy, please let the office know so that we can cut down on, on having so many extra copies left over at the end of each quarter. Um, Lutheran Ben and Mission is going whitewater rafting again. I do not know the youngest, the, the, the age limit on that, but... Uh, Looks like they have some young people in that. So Lutheran Men in Mission are going to go tubing down uh, uh, the river, and there's information there if you would like to, to go. Next slide. Uh, ecumenical worship on June 4th. Uh, St. James AME Church over in Pomeria, new pastor took over in September, and he walked into a church where the foundation needed to be replaced or fixed. There was a, a leak in the roof, and so then the carpeting needed to be replaced. And several of our churches in the community, including Whiteman Methodist Church, uh, Beth, Bethlehem Lutheran Church, P Mount Pilgrim Lutheran Church, and some others, got together, had a big barbecue, raised over $8,000 towards the repairs at uh, St. James AME Church. And this is the day that we are going to celebrate uh, the coming together to, to be the hands and feet of God to help uh, renovate this church. So that is Sunday, June 4th at 3 o'clock. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? With that said, I invite you to stand for our final hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns.